Today we are going to learn about the concept of banking of roads. Whenever a vehicle moves along a curved road, the centripetal force is required for the circular motion. This portion you must have learned till now. Now, if centripetal force is not present, the vehicle cannot travel along a circular path and will instead travel along a tangential path. The required centripetal force for this can be provided in two ways. One is the frictional force between the tires of the vehicle and the road and the second one is banking of roads. The banking of roads term is new to you but we are going to learn about this in this particular module. But before we talk about the banking of roads, what is that, what is the significance of that banking of roads, we will talk about the motion of a car on a curved level road. Consider a car of weight mg going around a circular level road of radius r with constant speed v. As you can see in the diagram, there is a car which is moving with constant speed v along the circular path r and the various forces acting on the car which is lying on the horizontal surfaces are, if you draw the free body diagram of that, you will find that weight of the car is acting vertically downwards and there is a normal reaction and friction force is acting inwards towards the center of the circle. So, we will sum up this, when the car is moving on a curved level road, three forces act on it, the weight of the car mg, the normal reaction N and the frictional force F. As you can see, there is no acceleration in the vertical direction. The net force along this direction must be zero. Look at the diagram again and try to balance the vertical components. You will find that both are equal and opposite. That means N minus mg is equal to zero. That is the net force of upward and the downward force is 0. This means n is equal to mg. The centripetal force for circular motion of the car is provided by the frictional force between the tires of the car and the road. Note, it is the static friction that provides the centripetal acceleration. St static friction opposes the impending motion of the car moving away from the circle. If you look at the equation, you will see that F is less than or equal to mu s into n. This we have taken from the law of limiting friction that the limiting friction is nothing but the maximum static friction which is equal to mu into n. That means static friction has to be less than or equal to mu s into n. And in this case, our friction is providing the required centripetal force. That is why we have made this equation that static friction which is less than or equal to mu s into n is equal to mv square by r where you know that mu s is the coefficient of static friction. Using n is equal to mg which we have already balanced that f is less than or equal to mu s mg is equal to mv square by r here friction is providing the centripetal force. So, we are replacing mv square by r with that. So, the equation becomes mv square by r is less than or equal to mu s into mg. That means v square is less than or equal to mu s into r into g. You can see clearly that this speed is independent of the mass of the car and it depends upon only on the coefficient of friction and the radius of the circular path along which the car is moving. Thus, the maximum speed with which a car can safely turn along a curved path is given by V max is equal to under root of mu s into r into g, where mu s is the coefficient of friction r is radius of the circle and g is acceleration due to gravity. We have already discussed this that v is independent of the mass of the car and depends on coefficient of friction and the radius of the curved path along which the car is moving. 
Now, if the speed of the car increases beyond this value, then there are the chances that the car may skid because the available friction is not sufficient to provide the required centripetal force. And if the car has to move at a higher speed than this, then the frictional force should be increased, but this can cause wear and tear of tires. That means frictional force is not reliable as it may decrease on wet roads during the rainy season or there can be any other reason for that so that the friction is decreasing. That means we cannot rely only on the frictional force to provide the centripetal force for the circular motion. If for the time being, let's imagine there is no frictional force is involved, then is there any other way so that we can get the required centripetal force? Yes, that is also a possibility. So we'll now discuss another example. Why does a cyclist lean inwards while moving along a curved path? Look at these pictures very, very carefully. You'll observe something that whenever the cyclist is moving, it always tends to bend inwards toward the center of the circle. But why the cyclist is doing this? What is the need of doing this? Why it has to bend only inwards? Why not the outwards? So, let's discuss that. A cyclist bends towards the center in order to move along a circular path. The cyclist may also increase speed without skidding by leaning more towards the center of circular path. This you must have observed while riding the bicycle on your own. The objective of bending is to change the direction and magnitude of normal force such that the horizontal component of the normal force provides the centripetal force, whereas the vertical component balances the cycle and the cyclist body system. Sounds confusing. Let's understand using a diagram. You can see a cyclist is riding and he is leaning his body towards one side and it seems that he is doing some kind of stunt. But actually there is a logic behind this stunt. Why he is doing this? Let's try to understand by looking at the various component of forces acting on the cyclist in this particular position. In this diagram, theta is the angle through which the cyclist has bent himself with respect to the vertical. And if you look at the components, mg is still acting vertically downwards. This has to be there. mg will always act towards the center. Now, if you look at the normal reaction, it is not balancing the weight as it was doing in the previous case which we discussed about the motion of a car on a level road. Now, our normal reaction has tilted. Now, what is the advantage of this? If we resolve this normal reaction into different components, we find that there are two components. One horizontal component is n sin theta and the vertical component is n cos theta. So, if we sum up the picture, we find that there are the various forces which are mg vertically downwards, which is balanced by n cos theta. And now, this is the main point. If we watch this picture carefully, we will realize that n sin theta is that component which is acting towards the center. What is the meaning of this? It means that n sin theta is going to provide the required centripetal force. And remember this, in this case we have completely neglected the force of friction between the tires and the road as we took this in the previous case. In our example, we just saw that our cyclist is trying to take a circular turn. So, in this situation, while he is not, has not taken any turn, then normal reaction is balanced by the weight of the cycle plus the cyclist. Now, when he leans his body towards one side, then what is the advantage of this leaning? Let's try to see that. If I take two components, one is n cos theta 
and one is n sin theta. They has to be rectangular components. So, now this is n and these are two components n cos theta and n sin theta. When our cyclist bent inwards, then you can see that n sin theta start pointing towards the center and n cos theta is balancing the weight of the cycle plus the cyclist. So, this is the leaning is actually helping the cyclist to take or negotiate the circular turn. Now, look at another picture. In this case, the cyclist is bending in other direction through an angle theta. Again, the components we are getting is same. Mg is vertically downwards. There is a normal reaction. If we resolve normal reaction in 2, then again we will find that n sin theta in this picture also is pointing towards the center. That means the cyclist was leaning towards one side to get this n sin theta because n sin theta is going to give the required centripetal force because our cyclist is not relying on the frictional force between the tires and the road. Now, the vertical component of normal reaction balances the weight of the cycle and the cyclist. We are taking cycle and cyclist as one system. That means n cos theta is equal to mg. The horizontal component of normal reaction, this is the main important component, is providing the centripetal force. That means n sin theta is equal to mv square by r. If we take the ratio of the two equations we just made, we find that tan theta is equal to v square by rg. That means v can be written as under root of rg tan theta. It means v is depending upon only the radius along which the cyclist is moving and the theta angle, theta angle, what is that angle? The angle through which the cyclist has bent and theta we have taken with respect to the vertical. The angle theta through which the cyclist bends would be greater. That means cyclist has to bend more if radius of the curved path is small. We call this as the cyclist is taking a sharp turn. So, if he is taking a sharp turn, then you will notice that the cyclist has to bend more. This you must have seen in motorcycle races. Whenever they take the sharp turn, their bending is towards the center and speed of the cyclist is large. Till now, we have learnt that centripetal force is provided either by friction between the roads and the tyres, which was our first derivation, or by leaning inwards while negotiating a curved path, which we just discussed. It was easy for a cyclist, but do you think it is going to be simple for three wheelers or four wheelers? The answer is no, it is not easy and not possible. It may lead into accidents. You may have noticed that curved portion of highways are always banked or tilted. When highway is dry, then friction force may be enough to provide the required centripetal force. But when highway is wet, Due to any reason, it may happen in rainy season or it may happen due to any other reason. Then frictional force may be negligible and in this case, when we are not taking friction into account and when, when we cannot lean towards one side, then what is there to help us which can give us the required centripetal force? And the answer is banking of roads. Now, what is the meaning of banking of roads? Look at the picture again. This is nothing but the road. It may be near your house, near your school. This is, it seems to be okay to us. There is nothing new. There is nothing important or nothing significant appearing to me. But if you watch this picture now, carefully, then you will realize that the upper end 
or the outer edge of the road is slightly raised above the inner edge and this is the process and the process of raising the outer edge of the curved road above the inner edge is called banking of roads and the angle through which the outer edge of the curved road is raised over the inner edge is called angle of banking. But what is the purpose of banking of roads? The bending is done to provide the necessary centripetal force for circular motion, to reduce wear and tear of tires due to friction, to avoid skidding and to avoid overturning of the vehicles. Now we will discuss about the motion of a car on a banked road. Banked means tilted or inclined. If the person sitting in the car tries to copy the cyclist and trying to copy his logic that he has got his centripetal force by leaning towards one side, okay, he just thought, let me also try that. So, in the process of getting n sin theta towards the center, he is doing stunts like this. In this case, he is able to manage n sin theta towards the center. But do you think this situation is practical? Can you drive the car like this? No, this is not possible. This is going to lead into accidents. So, if I do not want to rely on friction, I have just learned that if we cannot consider friction, then the option available to us is that we can lean towards one side. So, if we cannot do this, if we cannot bend the car like this, then the option available to us is if we cannot bend this car, we will raise the road like this. Then in that case, my problem will be solved. And this process of raising outer edge over the inner edge is called banking of roads and the angle through which the road has been tilted is called angle of banking. In this case, you can see that n sin theta is pointing towards the center and n cos theta is balancing the weight of the car. Consider a car of weight mg going along a curved path of radius r with speed v on a road banked or inclined at an angle theta. Look at the picture. If we resolve the components, now you will realize that mg is acting vertically downwards. There is a normal reaction which is normal to the surface in contact. Now, if we resolve normal component into its rectangular components, we will find that there are two components, one is horizontal and one is vertical. The horizontal component is n sin theta and the vertical component is n cos theta. In this case, we are taking friction into account too. So, we know that friction always acts tangential to the surfaces in contact. So, if we resolve the force of friction, then we find that there are two components horizontal and vertical. The horizontal component is f cos theta and the vertical component is n sin theta. The interesting part in this picture is, if you look at the components, what do we see? We see that now we have two components, one is n sin theta and one is f cos theta and both of them are pointing towards the center of the circle. That means now these are the two components which are going to provide the required centripetal force. Since there is no acceleration along the vertical direction, the net force along this direction must be 0. So, if you look at the free body diagram of this, we we'll, can balance the equation n cos theta is equal to f sin theta plus m into g. This equation we get by balancing the vertically upward and vertically downwards component. As f is nothing but mu s into n. So, we are replacing 
force of friction by mu s into n, where mu s is the coefficient of static friction. So, by using this f is equal to mu s n sin mu s, the equation becomes n cos theta is equal to mu s into n into sin theta plus m into g, which further on rearrangement becomes n cos theta minus mu s n sin theta is equal to m g. The centripetal force as we have just discussed is provided by the horizontal components of n and f. So, n sin theta plus f cos theta together is going to give us the centripetal force which is nothing but m v square by r. On further rearrangement, we find the equation takes the shape n sin theta plus mu s n cos theta is equal to m v square by r. If I find value of n from the equation which we got by balancing the vertical components, n can be written as n is equal to m g upon cos theta minus mu s sin theta and substituting the value of n in the equation which we formed by balancing our horizontal components n sin theta plus mu s n cos theta is equal to m v square by r. The equation takes the shape m g into sin theta plus mu s cos theta upon cos theta minus mu s sin theta is equal to m v square by r. If we solve this equation further, we find that v is equal to under root of r g into mu plus tan theta upon 1 minus mu tan theta. This is the maximum safe speed with which a vehicle can negotiate a circular road of radius r and banked at angle theta. Now again interesting part for just for fun just imagine that there is no friction that means mu s is equal to 0. Now our equation take this shape v naught is equal to under root r g tan theta. Now what is this equation? Does it look similar, familiar? Yes, it is familiar. This is the same equation which we get when we did the derivation of cyclists leaning towards one side. In that particular case, we neglected the friction and we said that the cyclist will get this speed by leaning towards one side because he somehow arranged the n sin theta which provided the required centripetal force. So, again in this case we are getting the same expression that means there is no need of for the car to bend towards one side. Instead of bending the car we are tilting the road on one side. Again the expression is going to be the same and the best part of this is at this speed frictional force is not needed at all to provide the centripetal force and driving at this speed on a bank road will cause little wear and tear of the tires which is the good advantage for us. Now we will consider one example, a cyclist speeding at 18 km per hour on a level road takes a sharp circular turn of radius 3 meter without reducing the speed. The coefficient of static friction between the tyres and the road is 0.1. Will the cyclist slip while taking the turn? Let us try to find out the answer. Now as we have discussed, on an unbanked road means the level curved road, frictional force alone can provide the centripetal force needed to keep the cyclist moving on a circular turn without slipping. If the speed is too large or the turn is too sharp or both, the frictional force is not sufficient to provide the necessary centripetal force and the cyclist may slip. That means the condition for the cyclist not to slip is given by the equation 
v square is less than or equal to mu s r into g where mu s is the coefficient of static friction, r is the radius of the circular path along which the cyclist is moving. In this particular question, the data given to us is r is equal to 3 meter, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square, coefficient of static friction is 0.1. So, if we multiply these th three things, we will get that mu s r g product is going to give 2.94 and v is given in the particular question as 18 kilometer per hour. As our rest of the data is in SI system, we will take that in the SI system too. So, we will convert kilometer per hour in meter into the meter per second. So, v is equal to 5 meter per second squaring it, it becomes 25. So, we can see clearly that the condition that is v square is equal to mu square rg is not obeyed in this case and there are very strong chances that the cyclist may slip while taking the circular turn. Thank you.